Hi, my name is Brian Markman. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer from Los Angeles, California, and welcome to this Ableton Live Technique. So I've spent the last uh, pretty significant amount of time uh, building this crazy Ableton Live rig, and in a series of videos coming up, I'll show you sort of a breakdown of what that is, because I think there's a lot of workflow tips and um, techniques that I use that a lot of you will find useful for your own performance and even production stuff. In this video, I wanted to specifically talk about a thing that I see happen a lot with live performers and the way they allocate resources, um, in particular with how they use soft synths in a live performance. Now, to kind of set this up so that uh, a quick disclaimer, if you're using multiple instances of plugin stacked to build thicker sounds or to create sounds or whatever, this is not going to help you necessarily. This is designed when you have, let's say, a multitude, like you've got five or six songs, ten songs, whatever, you're playing a live show, and you're utilizing the same plugin over and over and over again for different voices for different songs, but none of those are ever overlapping. So you never have two instances, let's say, of massive or silent or something playing, playing on top of each other. Um, what I find is this kind of creates two problems. The first one is, is it sort of makes your set unruly and huge because if you multiply that times all the voices in your song uh, and your set, now you've got a lot of stuff going on. You have like a needlessly giant thing that's kind of hard to manage on stage when you're doing things and it sort of discourages you being able to jam and do things on the fly because you've got so much information to manage. Uh, secondarily, if you're using a controller to mix, like I do, like an APC40 or another one of the um, the fader controllers, you'll find that your ability to manage everything without banking over, of course you can put everything in banks of eight and then you can scroll over quickly, which is one way to do it. I kind of like the idea that if I can distill things down to like the eight faders and control everything there, that's ideal for me. So what I'm going to show you is that. So this is a really typical layout. Um, you've got five instances of absinthe and you can see how things are staggered and then it's labeled with the five songs. And this is really typical where you've got, um, every time you've got a change in a song, uh, you're going to move over one track and then you've got everything labeled here and then, you know, and I don't have, of course, all the other layers of the song because I just wanted to demonstrate this on one voice. So what I like to do to sort of simplify this process and to keep my, my sets as small as possible for the purposes of managing them is I go in and I sort of create program changes inside of my clips in order to automate the changes in the voices that I'm going to use and keep this stuff simple. So this is a two-part process. This involves both having the program change embedded in the clip here as well as going into the plugin itself and telling the plugin that you want the program changes to happen over here. So if you use uh, any of the soft synths or any of the plugins that, that provide you with these uh, program changes, sometimes what you'll find is they're not always on the top layer and you have to sort of dig around a little bit. And in the case of some of the native plugins, you actually even have to turn it on. So what I'll do is I'm going to tick this here and now this brings me over to the program list, which is actually where I can drag patches that I like over into my own custom program list. And it's important to note that once you've done this, you're going to want to save this because there are times when things become corrupted and you will lose all the work that you've done here, all of the individual patches that you've dragged over to your program list. So you want to periodically go through and read the documentation of your plugins of how to do this. So I'm just going to go through real quick and I'm just going to drag two sort of random um, presets over here so that I have patches to load. So I've got this in the dead of night and I've got this infinite density. And um, right now, if I go through and I play this clip, um, Cool, so that's one of them. And if we look at Absinthe, you'll notice that it's playing infinite density, right? Whereas if I double click on In the Dead of Night, it sounds different. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set the program change in motion. And all I'm gonna do is go down here into my clip properties and I'm just going to set these. Now this bank and sub bank is a throwback to when we had traditional synthesizers and samplers where we had to do all of our navigation through a little window. So everything was sort of broken down into you know, types of sounds just like we have when we're navigating our, our library where we go through and we're browsing through uh, bases or leads or pads or any of that. Um, in this particular case, because we're not using any of those subdivisions, we're just going to go one and one and then we're going to go program one is going to be that first top patch that I would loaded. Now I'm going to do to represent the second song is I'm just going to duplicate 
down to this next clip. And in lieu of using the second track, I'm going to use just this second clip. And I'm going to change the program to program two. Now if I go over and I bring Absinthe back up so we can see what's going on, you'll notice that, um, and let's select something random. Let's just select any other sound. Okay, so now this other sound is loaded. Now when I go through and I play this clip, two things are going to happen. It's going to load the program, which you'll see change over here. Then you'll see it's going to play the notes. Now it's important to understand that this is not always an instantaneous process. So sometimes this is something where if you're playing a show, you want to be able to trigger the program change either in a separate clip or in this clip, play it once, stop it, and then restart it so that now you've allowed the software long enough, the plugin itself long enough to load up the voices and play. So if we play this back, see the perfect example. Then our second sound. And you can see how as I switch between them, it automatically switches back and forth in the program list here. Now, what I like to do is I tend to have clips where there's no actual sounds in them. So if I were to duplicate this clip one more time, let's do this here. Now what I would do is I would actually create a clip that has no sounds in it. So now what happens is this will just function as a patch change. I use uh, Touchable, which is a MIDI controller piece of software for the iPad, which allows me to do program changes by just touching the voice that I like. It also allows me to quickly be able to go through and like I can descriptively name things so I know like, oh, that one sounds 80s or that one sounds kind of dark or whatever. So there's a lot of advantages to this. But again, what you end up with is now, as opposed to having these five tracks of things that I have to manage, I have one track that now can become, say, pads if I wanted to use it like that. And then I can go through and I can name the patches accordingly here. So now I've not only got control over one channel that allows me to simplify things, but I also kind of know what I'm doing here, which opens up the door to jamming. A lot of times what will happen is we tend to pre-cook everything, which is great, but what happens if we want to jam and we want to do something entirely different at a show? By isolating all of our program changes into these clips here, now as opposed to having to use a mouse and a keyboard and do anything more uh, complicated or intricate that also could backfire on us if we can't find something, we can load up our program changes in advance and we can find a whole bunch of ones that we're happy with, right? So if I go into here, you'll notice I can put a lot in here, right? Now I can go through and I can load up the ones that I want, create all these dummy clips that have the changes in them, and then I can have those corresponding changes as a fast way for me to switch around easily and then play my show. So this is just one tip that I think will help you to streamline your performance, streamline the way that you sort of look at working with live and with your plugins, and also think of things a little bit differently in terms of how you manage your sounds and access them in a performance or a production environment. So I'm Brian Markman. Thanks for checking this out and come back for some more Ableton Live techniques.